Hello viewers, we are I'm Mohana Dina and Kinshima Vaida and now we're going to talk about wireline logging. Wireline logging is a practice of making a detailed record of the geologic formations penetrated by a borehole. To run wireline logs, the hole is cleaned and stabilized and the drilling equipment extracted. The first logging tool string is then attached to the logging cable and lower it into the hole to its maximum drill depth. The cable attached to the tool acts both as support for the tool and as a canal for data transmission. The wireline logging tools are divided into two main groups, like an open hole and closed hole. Open hole include gamma ray lock, neutron porosity lock, density lock, sonic lock, resistivity lock, NMR, which is nuclear magnetic resonance, image lock and formation test. As for the closed hole, we have thermal decay tool, gamma ray spectroscopy tool, production logging, cement bond lock, and casing color locator. Let's start from the gamma ray lock. The gamma ray tool is a passive logging tool. It records the naturally occurring radiation of gamma rays from the formation. Gamma rays are bursts of high energy electromagnetic magnetic waves spontaneously by some radioactive elements. Nearly all the gamma radiation encountered in the Earth is emitted by the radioactive potassium isotope, which has an atomic weight of 40, and by radioactive elements of the uranium and thorium series. Its applications are to differentiate between reservoir and non-reservoir rock, to indicate shallowness of a formation, and depth control correlation between log runs. Here you see the table with some natural GR values of different minerals, reservoir rocks and ceiling rocks. As you see, the maximum API units corresponds to the shale, clays and silver. Let's see how GR logging tool will respond to the following lithological column which includes shale, sand, and shaley sand. The maximum JR value will be on the shale, while the minimum will be on the sand and the mid one on the shaley sand. Let's move to porosity tools. Porosity logs measure the fraction or percentage of pore volume in a volume of rock. It includes density logging tool, neutron porosity logging tool, and sonic logging tool. Neutron porosity log. Neutron logs are used principally for delineation of porous formation and determination of porosity. They respond primarily to the amount of hydrogen in the formation. Thus, in clean formation whose pores are filled with water or oil, the neutron log reflects the amount of liquid-filled porosity. Gas zones can often be identified by comparing the neutron log with another porosity log or a coronary. Applications are to indicate presence of gas in the formation, identification of gas oil contact, and to identify formation lithology. Neutron logging tools include the GNT tool series, the SP sidewall neutron porosity tool, and the CNL, which is compensated neutron and dual porosity logs. Since the two pairs of detectors are placed at different spacings and neutrons are detected at the different energy levels, the environmental effect can be expected to be significantly different to the, of the uh, two neutron measurements. So here you see that we have a neutron source and near detector uh, with a far detector. It gives us a more detailed lithological characterization. So here you see the plot of a neutron logging tool. We usually use it um, in a combination with a gamma ray log and a caliper. And it's not shown here, but uh, we usually use it in a, uh, in a combination with the density tool as well. As for the density log, density logging tools contain a radioactive source which is applied to the borehole wall in a shielded sidewall skin. 
the source emits medium energy gamma rays into the formation. These gamma rays may be result of a high velocity particles that collide with the electrons in the formation. At each collision, a gamma ray loses some but not all of its energy to the electron and then continues with diminished energy. This type of interaction is known as Compton scattering. The scattered gamma rays reaching the detector at fixed distance from the source are counted as an indication of formation density. So, the main application of the density log is to determine the porosity. To minimize the influence of the mud column, the skid-mounted source and detector are shielded the openings of the shields are applied against the wall of the borehole by an eccentric arm. The force exerted by the arm and the plow-shaped design of the skid allow it to cut through the soft mud cakes. Any mud cake or mud remaining between the two in the formation is seen as a part of the formation and must be accounted for. The number of Compton scattering collisions is related directly to the number of electrons in the formation. Consequently, the response of the density tool is determined essentially by the electron density. The electron density is in turn related to the bulk density, which in turn depends on the density of the rock matrix material, the formation porosity, and the density of the fluid filling the pores. So, Typically, density values of reservoir matrix, port fluids, and sealing rocks are given on the table. The porosity calculation can be achieved by the following formula. The density neutron response uh, will give us the lithological interpretation as for the shale you see, you see here. And uh, the gas, <coughs> where we have the minimum um, values on the neutron and the minimum values on the density. Another logging tool is a resistivity log. The resistivity of a formation is the key parameter in the determination of hydrocarbon saturation. Electric current can only pass through a formation because of the conductive water it contains. With a few rare exceptions, such as metallic sulfide and graphite, dry rock is a good electrical insulator. Moreover, perfectly dry rocks are very seldom encountered. Therefore, subsurface formations have thin measurable resistivities because of the water in their pores or absorbed in their interstitial clay. The resistivity of a formation depends on the resistivity of the formation of water, amount of water present, and pore structure geometry. So, the application of resistivity logging is the calculation of hydrocarbon saturation and identification of oil water contact. An electrical current will flow only through the interstitial water saturating the pore structure of the formation and then only if the interstitial water contains dissolved salts. These salts dissociate into positively charged cations and negatively charged anions. Under the influence of an electrical field, this cat, uh, these ions move carrying an electrical current through the, through the solution. Other things being equal, the greater the salt concentration, the lower the resistivity of the formation water, and therefore of the formation. The greater the porosity of the formation, and hence, the greater the amount of, water, of formation water, the lower the resistivity. Here you see the response over near and uh, long space detectors. As for the induction logging tool, it consists of a receiver coil, transmitter coil, and induced current. Basically, resistivity logs response to the borehole diameter, borehole deviation, mud salinity, mud filtrate invasion, formation layering, bed resistivities, type of tool, and tool position and hole. Let's move to another one. Uh, which is nuclear magnetic resonance. Nuclear magnetic resonance is a relatively new development in petrophysics and is increasingly being used in both downhole and laboratory environment by the oil industry. The tool makes use of the 
Gyromagnetic property of protons, which behave like magnets, rotating. Since hydrogen nuclei are abundantly present in pore spaces in the composition of water or hydrocarbons, they align themselves along the direction of the applied magnetic field by the NMR2. Once the magnetic field is removed, the protons relax to a stable alignment. From this, the NMR2 derived the following two signals which are then used for NMR interpretation. Those signals are longitudinal relaxation time and transverse relaxation time. The NMR response of a formation directly determine its porosity and permeability, providing a continuous record along the length of the borehole. The chief application of the NMR tool is to determine movable fluid volume of rock. This is the pore space excluding clay-bound water and irreducible water. Neither of these are movable in the NMR sense, so these volumes are not easily observed on the older logs. On modern tools, both, <coughs> both of them can often be seen in the signal response after transforming the relaxation curve to the porosity domain. Imaging tool. The term borehole imaging refers to those logging and data processing methods that are used to produce centimeter scale images of the borehole wall and the rock that make it up. The context is therefore that of open hole, but some of the tools are closely related to their case hole equivalents. Borehole imaging has been one of the most rapidly advancing technologies in wireline well logging. The applications range from detailed reservoir descriptions through reservoir performance to enhanced hydrocarbon recovery. Specific applications are fracture identification, analysis of small-scale sedimentological features, evaluation of net pay and thinly bedded formations, and the identification of breakouts. The next one is a formation testing tool. It's a test taken with a wireline formation tester. The wireline formation pressure measurement is acquired by inserting a probe into the borehole wall and performing a mini drawdown and a build-up by withdrawing a small amount of formation fluid and then waiting for the pressure to build up to the formation pore pressure. This measurement can provide formation pressures along the borehole, thereby giving a measure of pressure with depth or along the horizontal borehole. The trend in formation pressure with depth provides a measure of the formation fluid density, and a change in this trend may indicate a fluid contact. Abrupt changes in formation pressure measurements with depth indicate differential pressure depletion and demonstrate barriers to vertical flow. Lateral variation in formation pressure measurement along a horizontal well or in multiple vertical wells indicate reservoir heterogeneity. Next one is a deep meter log. It's a downhole geophysical log designed to measure the deep dipping surfaces in a borehole. The logging tool consists of four resistivity logging devices set at 90 degrees to one another and held against the side of the borehole. When wound back to the surface, they respond instantly to layers of differing electrical resistivity associated with the bedding, while dipping beds produce a response with a time delay related to the dip of the horizon. Computer processing of the data yields a tadpole plot of dips and dip direction in the well. It's claimed that deep meter data can be used to identify tectonic as well as sedimentary structures. Data are often equivocal and must be interpreted with a great caution. Now, Aida is going to present you the closed hole devices. Thermal decay tool. Thermal decay log is known by various names in the oil and gas service, such as thermal decay time or neutron lifetime. Thermal decay tool measures gamma ray counts when thermal neutrons are captured by the formation. Measures the neutron capture cross section, which principally depends on the amount of fluorine present as formation brine. 
It determines formation water salinity, porosity, and water saturation. The neutron generator produces high-speed thermal neutron pulses in the borehole as well as formation regions. The electronic circuit on the pulsed neutron decay logging tool then records the detection times relative to a time reference related to the neutron production bursts. The downhole and uphole circuit controls the operation of the tool and with the surface system processes the spectrum of die away or decay detection times. From this data, the system estimates earth formation properties, which are then used in the evaluation of the reservoirs. The logging tool can be logged through open or cased hole. The detector is designed to detect gamma rays resulting from capture of thermal neutrons, which is produced as a result of slowing down, and the high energy source neutrons, getting thermalized, or the thermal neutrons. Production logging. Production logging tools are run in completed wells to ascertain the nature and behavior of fluids in or around the borehole during production or injection. These logs are used to analyze dynamic well performance and the productivity or injectivity of different zones, to diagnose problem wells or to monitor results of a stimulation or completion. This discipline deals with a variety of techniques used to measure well performance with terms ranging from annular flow to basket flow meter, from hold up to water cut meter. Cement bond lock. Cement bond tools measure the bond between casing and the cement placed in the annulus between the casing and the well bore. The measurement is made by using acoustic sonic and ultrasonic tools. The measurements of industry standard tonic tools are usually displayed on a cement bond lock in millivolts units, decibel attenuation, or both. Reduction of the reading in millivolts or an increase in the decibel attenuation is an indication of better quality bonding of the cement behind the casing to the casing wall. Casing Cola Locator a downhole tool used to confirm or correlate treatment depth using known reference points on the casing string. The casing color locator is an electric logging tool that detects the magnetic anomaly caused by the relativity high mass of the casing color. A signal is transmitted to surface equipment that provides a screen display and printed lock enabling the output to be correlated with previous locks and known casing features, such as pub joints installed for correlation purposes. <laughs>